Hello, my friends! We are five mythically immortal players with over 40,000 matches of experience. And today we will show you 15 mistakes you have to avoid in order to become a godly marksman player. Playing as a marksman can be the most difficult thing in Mobile Legends, as it's often even harder than being the jungler. If you're getting ganked non-stop while your allies do their utmost to ignore your existence, you will have a pretty hard time farming, are more or less useless for the majority of the match and will most likely be tempted to throw your phone against the wall. So the first mistake you need to avoid is… Mistake 1. Getting ganked. <laughs> okay, I know. You might ask yourself, lol, how can I avoid getting ganked? Should I just ask the enemy nicely to leave me alone or what? No, of course not, as this will most likely result in even more ganks. Mobile Legend players love nothing more than bullying other players and seeing them cry. Too bad they often focus on the allies rather than the enemies, but that's another story. What we mean here is avoiding the gank that is happening and survive despite being outnumbered. The first gank usually starts around the 1 minute 30 second mark, which is when the third minion wave arrives. Most junglers will have finished their rotation which brings them very close to level 4, so if the enemies are missing on the minimap at this time, you have to assume that they are sitting in this bush right here and just wait that you come out of your turret so they can get you nuts. Luckily most marksmen have some kind of skill shot that they can aim at the minions, so instead of falling for that trap, make sure to only get close to the minion wave to last hit one of them and retreat right away. Alternatively, hide in this bush closest to your turret and stay invisible. If the enemy actually rotates to you, you can easily waste their time by just staying hidden. You can of course also poke the gold crab if you're on the top lane to check this bush, as the crab runs there if an enemy is hiding in it. Generally, you should always pay attention to the minimap, especially though during the laning phase. By the way, if you haven't already, make sure to re-download Mobile Legends with Airtight to get up to 30% more diamonds using my code MLGUY. After following the simple tutorial in the description or the pinned comment, you can simply buy diamonds to get free app coins that you can use to get more free diamonds. Here I just bought diamonds worth $30 and because of the app coins that I receive, I could get another 275 diamonds for free. Just imagine buying diamonds with the Google Play Store and receive nothing for it. So again, invest the 2 minutes of your time by following the simple tutorial in the description or the pinned comments and get more diamonds for your money. Again, whenever you don't see the enemies on the map and you don't know where they were in the last 10 seconds, assume that they want to gank you and start to play safe. Often you will see your enemies pop up in another place and you played safe for no reason, but the next time you actually avoid a gank because of it, you will be thankful that you played like a scared little chicken. As a marksman, there is nothing more important than getting as much XP and gold as possible because that's the only way for you to become useful as marksman item dependent. That's why you should avoid mistake 2. Not last hitting the minions. If you last hit all minions in the first 5 minutes of the game, you get around 400 extra gold. Considering that this means you will have 2300 gold instead of 1900, it is really worth taking the extra effort. For our newbies out here, last hitting minions obviously means that you're giving a minion the killing blow. Usually it's the easiest when you do this with a skill instead of your pure basic attack. Like Brody's first skill, Irothel's first or second skill, Hanabi's first skill or Clint's passive. There are also heroes who have strong basic attacks like Leslie with her passive up or Beatrix with her sniper rifle, but you also have heroes like Wanwen and Moskov who have a harder time as they don't really have the skill shot. But you can still manage to pull this off with a bit of practice. Now that you know that you can get 400 extra gold, how much should you risk when trying to last a minion? That you shouldn't die for that is obvious I hope, but you should also avoid it if you receive some serious damage while trying it. Being on the lane means that you have to manage your HP and the last thing you want is being forced to recall and miss a wave just because you wanted to last hit a minion. It's way more important collecting all minions rather than last hitting one just to miss another one. Now, I already mentioned it a few times now, but this is probably the most important mistakes you have to avoid at all costs. Mistake 3. Dying. 
I really want to make sure that this is burned into your brain so whenever you play as a marksman, you remember it. Are you listening closely? Okay, repeat after me. I'm not dying no matter what. You need to farm, farm and farm some more so you get the advantage over your enemies. So you can actually deal some serious damage in the late game. Here, let me show you the perfect example clip. I play Layla here and in the first 8 minutes of the game I did nothing else but farming and staying alive. So while my enemies kept feeding with 3 late game heroes, I got an insane gold lead. Only from farming, not killing. Now watch this. Although I wasted my ult and messed up my first skill, I still deal so much more damage than everyone else that I get a maniac. This was probably the worst maniac I ever got but who cares. I got it because I didn't die once and just farmed while staying safe. So if 3 or more enemies try to turret dive you, run. Dun dun dun. In 90% of the cases you die without having the chance to take someone with you. The only exception is maybe one one who can become invincible and remove CC effects. Well, unless Moonton actually removes this ability, but I seriously hope they don't remove it. But other than that, run if there is no backup inside. You should obviously ask for backup, but as we already pointed out in the intro, sometimes you have a team who for some reason loves to ignore their marksman. That's one of the reasons why I try to remind my allies in the draft pick phase that they should please gank my lane, smiley face. You will be surprised how many times this actually works in solo queue. Because despite many people think that ML has the most toxic community, there are actually only a few who are toxic no matter what. Many players become toxic for different reasons in a single match, but that's because they're not communicating with each other. Be nice to your allies and they will most likely support you. Now if you lose your outer turret because you have no support, so be it. Then you just have to play smart and apply some wave management tricks. Instead of mindlessly attacking waves, try to move the minion wave fight closer to your inner turret. Then you have a bush to hide in and we can watch how these poor creatures beat the crap out of each other. Now this already takes away some of the things I want to mention in Mistake 4. Not managing your wave. Especially in lower ranks, many players just attack the minions for no reason at all. They can't just sit still and play smart, they need to see blood. This you can easily abuse and move the minion fight closer to your turret. Why should you do this though? Apart from the first goal of course, which was what? Not dying, exactly. The other laning phase goal is to stop your counterpart from farming. So when the enemy is beating up your minions, let them and stay close to your turret. Then when the enemy minions rush to your turret, make sure that at least the cannon minion don't run into your turret's range. Let them attack you and just stand still while obviously avoiding any damage from the enemy. Once your minion waves arrive now, they stop inside of your turret. While the enemy's wave runs very far and starts a fight right in front of your turret. Like this you created a situation where the enemy marksman has to get very far away from their own turret to farm. And now they either have to take the risk which means it's super easy to gank them or they stay behind which means they are out of range and get no farm when the minion dies. You of course are in range and get your farm but don't attack the minions except when you want to last hit them. You want to freeze the wave at exactly this point and keep it running for as long as possible. So you get the advantage over your counterpart without risking anything as you're close to your turret. This alone makes you already better than 90% of all Mobile Legends player. If you are playing a strong early game marksman like Brody, you can also freeze the wave when the minions are fighting in the middle. Then you have to move further away from your turret though, which means it's more likely that the enemy can gank you successfully. That's why you should avoid Mistake 5. Not knowing your hero's strengths and weaknesses. We have 18 marksmen in the game who can go to the gold lane and be effective. The only one you should never pick is Granger because he's a jungler. If you want to be a good marksman player, you need to know how strong your main is compared to the other 70 marksmen. 
The strongest early game marksmen are Clint, Beatrix, Brody, Bruno and Melissa. Carrie, 1 1, Moskov, Leslie, Hanabi, Popol and Ixia are average. And Layla, Mia, Claude, Nathan, Irothel and Kimi are the weak ones in the early game. So if you play a weak early game hero against a strong one, what do you do? Do you try to poke that fecker away so they start to cry and recall back to their base? Eh, nope. You have to stay passive and near your turret. Last hit, all minions, wait for your allies to gank your lane. Remember to ask them already in the draw phase. And generally try to create a stalemate as your time to shine come later. Playing a weak early game hero means you need to have patience and wait until you get your core items to become useful. Unfortunately, many inexperienced players choose them, especially Layla and Mia. Now, if we turn it around and you play a strong early game marksman against the weak one, you of course have to make use of that as much as possible. Pressure the enemy as much as possible, either by poking them so hard that they either have to recall or even die, or by freezing the lane which I just explained to you. If you're daring, you can also clear a wave and rotate mid to surprise the enemy. This requires that your allies are anticipating your attempt to gank mid, which pretty much nobody will below mythic. One thing you need to be aware of as a strong early game marksman is that it's very likely that you are being ganked very often. Even in lower ranks your enemies might realize that you are wiping the floor with your counterpart, so they are especially thirsty for your blood. It can easily happen that you constantly face three enemies as they start to get tunnel vision on your nuts. And that's extremely annoying. Then you can only cry for help or at least hope that your allies are not throwing the 4v2 situation they face now. Talking about lower ranks, mistake 6. Getting distracted from your babysitter. In lower ranks, it's more common that the Roma is going to the gold lane and babysits the marksman. I honestly don't know why they are doing it, but it is what it is. It is generally more difficult to get an advantage in a 2v2 situation because it is very dependent on your Roma's performance and the hero they picked. If both Roma's are tanks, your job is pretty easy as you just have to collect your minions and avoid dying. This also means that you shouldn't engage with your tank when they are mindlessly attacking the enemies. Spam the retreat button and if they don't listen, let them die. There is no use putting yourself in danger just because your Roma is a mindless troll. Your job is to farm, so just farm. If there's a chance to get a kill or make the enemy retreat, you should of course engage. I was just talking here about those rumors who just keep attacking and attacking without any plan behind it. Now there's also the possibility that one or both rumors are supports. This makes things much more complicated as supports are much better at babysitting than tanks. Supports with damage like Diggy or Selena are really annoying when they focus you, as you can't really do much against them except playing passive. Healing supports are even worse as all your pokes are wasted. You poke, they heal, you poke again, they heal again, and so on and so on. The problem is that they also poke you and if you are with a tank, your HP is slowly going down while they are always running with their full HP. Here you can only hope your tank is smart enough to play passive and is not trying to fight them non-stop. On the other hand, if you have the healer by your side, you should try to play aggressive but only so much that you're not dying. Many strategies sadly don't work as well when babysitters are involved, so you can only farm and hope your allies gank your lane so you get an advantage. Avoiding ganks still counts here as well of course and never sacrifice yourself for the roamer. Now if there is only one babysitter the plan is pretty simple. If you have a babysitter who is not leaving even after you told them and the enemy doesn't have one, pressure that poor bloke as much as possible to get the advantage. Be aware though that it's very likely that your lane is the primary goal for ganks. If you are the poor bloke though, I can only hope for you that you picked a strong early game marksman. Stay passive under your turret, hope that the enemy is not freezing the wave and, well, farm as much as you can while not dying. This is more or less every mistake you need to avoid in the laning phase.
But that's of course only the beginning of the match. Even if you get the advantage in the early game, there are still so many more mistakes to avoid. Mistake 7. Not pushing when there is a chance. This is the sole reason why so many players are not reaching mythical glory. All marksmen are good or even brilliant at pushing, and it's your damn job to push the turrets and the ugly base of the enemy away. Here, look, I still dominate with 1-1 simply because I push non-stop. Usually one or two enemies come to stop me, but with my ult I can easily delete them. So I can keep pushing and win the game. Now what you should avoid is obviously just running towards the turret blindly and getting picked off multiple times. No, here your best friend will be the biggest help you have, the minimap. As we discussed earlier, if you see no enemies on the map and you're not sure where they are, you're not pushing. You stay safe until you know exactly where they are. Whenever you have the chance to push though, let's say you just gave your counterpart a ride back to the base and everyone else is fighting for the turtle on the other side of the map, then you have to push as it's the only logical thing to do. Destroying the first turret gives you such a huge advantage, as the enemy marksman can't just go to clear the wave anymore without risking being ambushed. Now after you've done that, basically every other turret is your next target. If there's a chance to push mid because everyone is fighting on the other side of the map, do it. If you get the chance to split push, do it as well. Just make sure that you're not being picked off or be good and fat enough to fight them off. Mistake 8. Not rotating. Since I just mentioned the mid lane, yes, you're actually allowed. No, you need to rotate to maximize your potential. I don't mean the same rotation that the mid laner or the jungler is doing, of course. Because as a side laner, you need to stay on your lane and you need to farm. Especially in the first 5 minutes of the game, you should be glued to your lane and get all the gold cannon minions. If there's a gank on your side of the map in the river area, you can join it if you already cleared your wave. But remember, don't die. Once you tore down the first turret, it's time to rotate. Because either you got your first two core items, which means you're becoming effective now, or if you tore it down much faster, you are probably having a huge gold lead and become effective because of that. I love to target the mid lane turret because it opens up the entire enemy jungle, which makes it so much easier to set ambushes in the enemy's territory so they aren't safe anywhere anymore. I wouldn't adventure to the other side of the map though, unless you are 100% sure you have a smart ally who covers the lane for you. Or in the late game of course, where rotation patterns doesn't really exist anymore. Now if your turret broke down first, you are also allowed to rotate. I mean, you can't just hide somewhere and not getting any farm anymore. Go to the mid lane and call for help, so you have support on your lane and push the first turret away. Now when I say rotate. You also need to rotate correctly. Mistake 10. Not building the right item. Here your map awareness comes into play again. There's nobody on the map. Take the safe route through your own jungle instead of the river area and you should be fine. See everybody on the map and there is no chance for an ambush. Take the fastest route to reach your destination as fast as possible. Generally you don't want to die while rotating as this is one of the most dumb ways to die. Dumb ways to die, wait. Dumb ways to die. So many dumb ways to die. I cannot sing and I did it on purpose and I don't care. Next mistake. Mistake 9. Ignoring the minimap. I know I already talked a lot about the minimap. But it is the most important tool that you have. Just looking at it isn't enough though. You need to understand what it tells you at every second of the match. So let's rush through some quick examples and see if you know what it tells you. Think quick. What do you see on the minimap right now that could be relevant? So we're obviously in a 1v2 situation so you need to stay safe. Which is why I hide here in the bush to collect the gold from the minions. We also saw that Fanny just cleared her blue buff, so it's very likely that she will come to our lane. Why am I so sure about that? Well, the turtle hasn't spawned yet and our enemies are way easier targets than Valir or Kadita. So I made sure to be ready to jump in, although Fanny still surprised me with her awesome engage. Now what do you see here? Ok, that one is easy, Novaria is low and we already took down the first turret, so we can just easily cut the escape path to pick her off. What do you see here? 
exactly. You see nothing. Well, now you see three enemies run towards your lane. So you need to get the F out of there and don't be like Valier who recalls openly. If you don't read the map properly, these mistakes will happen many times. And they will bring down your win rate by 10% or even more. Mistake 10. Not building the right items. <laughs> okay. Honestly, I could make a single 50 minute video for every hero and explain which items are the right ones for which situation. But we ain't got time for that, so here's a quick rundown. If you play a hero in rank, it's probably your main hero. To maximize their potential, make sure to know which items you have to build against which enemies. Let me take my marksman main 1 1 as an example. Yay, he talks about 1 1. Woo! Corrosion Scythe and Demon Hunter Sword are her two core items that I need to build no matter what. Wind Talker I need almost all the time as well for the attack speed. And Wind of Nature as well to counter physical burst heroes or the enemy's marksman. There are cases though where I don't need it because the enemy has three magic damage dealers. Then I need Rose Gold Meteor and probably even Athena or Radiant Armor to survive the magic burst. If I face many tanky enemies I add Golden Staff, so I use the Trinity build to shred their high HP away. Then Malefic Raw is also a must. If I face healers like Estes, I need Sea Halberd so my old chain is actually working. And when I face many squishies, I go for a crit build with Hearth Claws and Berserker's Fury, so I can easily out damage them without even using my ult as it's hard AF to activate it without any support from a setter. In close matches I might even get immortality to not die at crucial points of the game. So in total I just mentioned 13 tier 3 items that I could possibly get with 1-1 one -one, and there are even more options. Like the Great Dragon Spear, Antique Koras or Twilight Armor in special cases. Some heroes only have 9 possible items and others have even more than 1-1. One -one. So if you choose your main and you don't have the win rate that you want, this is where you can easily get some extra wins by just having the right items at the right time. And these are only the tier 3 items. You also need to consider which low tier items you need to buy. Again, let's go through them for 1-1. One -one. Steel leg plates are always a cheap option for physical defense if you face a very annoying Brody, Clint or Beatrix. If a Natalia or Saber follows your cattail nonstop, Dreadnought armor is your savior. Swift crossbow is the very first item you need to prioritize right after the game starts. As you need it to get corrosion scythe and it makes you much stronger than getting a regular spear as a first item. And if you have problems with a magic damage dealer, get a magic resist cloak for 220 gold. You can even get two of them if a Eudora is always hunting you down as it's so cheap to get them. Just don't forget to sell them once you got your core items or upgrade them into Athena or Radiant if you need them. Mistake 11. Act like a headless chicken. Yeah, okay, what the hell do I mean by that? We focus on so many big mistakes but there are also many small things that you need to avoid. So I just press them all into one mistake. Go! If your counterparts play smart and passive, but then suddenly run aggressively towards you, you should be very suspicious. Most likely they are about to get back up so they try to bait you to attack them. Once you've done that, the allies jump on you and you die. If it's the other way around though, you obviously should try to execute the strategy. If it's the late game, don't run around too carelessly. Yes, you are probably stacked AF and dish out extreme damage, but if the enemy mage or assassin ambushes you, you're dead before you can even call them a camper. Connecting to this, don't run into the enemy's territory without vision. Or generally, don't run around without vision. As marksman, you are dependent on your allies, especially the Roma, to receive vision. Unless you have a skill like Leslie, but most MMs don't have that. So if you don't have any vision, stay safe and don't take the risk of being ambushed. The same goes for chasing kills. Your enemies are usually running away from you into their own territory. So following them is the worst thing you can do. You put yourself in a very dangerous spot and most of the time you won't even catch your victim. And even if you do, your enemies could run you over which results in a neutral trait. Instead you could have found while your enemy is recalling resulting in you having more farm than them so the next time you can actually finish them off. 
Why are people so hungry for kills? I don't get it. What I also don't get are crybabies who demand a babysitter. Even when you are in a 1v2 situation, you have to see it as an absolute win. You can keep two enemies busy by staying passive and just farm your minions, while your allies can easily dominate the enemy mid laner and jungler. Demand ganks of course, but never ask your Roma to babysit you as well. Don't die, farm and wait for the late game to shine. Most marksmen require a lot of patience, so if you don't have that, better pick another role. Talking about patience, mistake 12. Losing your cool. In most scenarios we talked about what to avoid when things are already running good or at least not too bad. But what can you do when you already died 5 times? You lost your first 2 turrets and your team refuses to help you. Cry, throw your phone against the wall, become toxic and tell your allies that you will dig down the mom. <laughs> no, the secret is staying calm and keep farming. I should make a ML t-shirt with this statement. Let's have a look at this match. This match wasn't going well for me at all. I could beat the Melissa around the park but got ganked non-stop by the enemies. My allies completely ignored my lane though, so I got very frustrated and expressed it to them. I stacked up my deaths, lost my turret and kept getting ambushed by the enemies. Obviously it was my fault going there but as I said, I lost my cool completely. So after the 6th death, I made a decision. Forget everything that happened, just farm and keep cool baby. So this was exactly what I did. I just kept farming and avoid making any risky plays. So when we got to the point where we could actually end the match, I was strong enough to support my team and we could end the game in the end. The point that I want to make is although I played very badly in the first 10 minutes, I made the decision to stop playing like a headless chicken, only entered ganks when I was almost 100% sure that we will win them, made sure that I always hit my skills, especially my old, <coughs> okay except this time but hey flicker combo lol and otherwise I kept farming until I crawled back and had more gold than any of my enemies at the end. Mistake 13. Having the wrong positioning. I'm sure many of you were waiting for this one. I can't even count how many times I was screaming at my phone when I saw another Hana feed going into a 1v5 against the enemy and got deleted in 0.8 seconds. Positioning is key for a marksman, especially for our glass cannons. First, the one basic rule you always have to remember is don't jump in first into a gang. You are not the one that is initiating a team fight, as you are way too squishy to sustain any incoming damage. Now let's list all the heroes and how to play them. When you play any of those heroes, you need to wait for the proper engage first and you need to maintain a certain distance to the enemy. Position yourself behind the tanky allies or have obstacles between you and the enemy and only engage after the enemies already fired out the skills. Then you can easily wipe the floor with the enemies without much backfire. Clint and Leslie are a different case though. Their big strength is poking the enemy while keeping a safe distance to them, so with them you can engage in a way that you poke the enemies from a far distance and then run away so they can get your nuts. If you start any big ganks you still shouldn't be in the front line though. For that you need to play Moskov, 1-1 or Brody. All three of them need to be close to the enemies to deal their damage. Moskov range is very small and his biggest strength is stunning the enemies to spear them to death. In ganks you still have to wait for an engage, but in ambush situations he is fine on his own. One one needs to get close to the tanky enemies to activate her ult, which she can then rain down on the enemies. Because of this smaller range of her ultimate she needs to be quite close to them or she just can't hit her targets. And similar to Moskov, she can also ambush her enemies as she's invincible while it's active. Brody's range is also very limited and he needs to be close to the enemies to hit multiple enemies with his first skill. That's the reason why many players use a hybrid build on him, so he can sustain the incoming damage when he's in the front line. Claude is a very special case as he also has to get very close to the enemies, but please never jump in first or try to do any ambush moves. His ult deals an insane amount of damage but only to high HP enemies. The lower their HP is, the smaller your damage becomes. 
which means you can damage them a lot, but you won't finish them off fast enough. You need allies that follow up to finish the low HP enemies. And Beatrix is a wildcard as you can put her in any category because of her 4 weapons. Mistake 14. Not watching this video where we show you how to counter all meta heroes. Also a huge shout out to our MLG family members especially the mythical glory members like Izzy and Abu Dutiam. See you